for our theme music. Every good hero. Have, All right, everyone, this is Tim of the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's the Monday after the debacle. We're saying that a lot this year, quite frequently. There's stuff to talk about today. Is there good to talk about today outside of Graham Gano? No. <laughs> well, maybe there is. We, 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 we can find some good because everyone's like, you're so negative. Well, when you suck for X amount of years, yeah, you're allowed to be negative when you tell the truth. If you want to sit there and be a pie in the sky fan that doesn't follow the team with any regularity in reference to what they're doing personnel wise. Yeah. Then everything's fine for you. You live in a nice delusional world. Still got a headache. (laughs) The sangria. No more. No more sangria. No more fruit. You want to know why? You can't handle the fruit. No, I can't handle the fruit. Mike Lee. (laughs) Mike Lee, Mike Lee over there in Florida couldn't handle the fruit either because he was he was he he actually went to the Miami game and was and was calling out the calling out the channel here yelling let the peacock fly all the credit in the world to Mike great subscriber great guy in general uh let's talk about Logan Ryan the New York Giants to uh, Daniel Jones I love the first of all we're also going to talk about why this is a just a trash heap of a team. And we got to get rid of everybody. We'll talk about that. I love the fans that are like, Tua's garbage. Tua's just terrible. I love it because Daniel Jones, when he went 19 for 30, completed 63 pass, 63% of his passes and 200 yards and one touchdown, was turning the corner. He was turning the corner. When they went against the Raiders, he went 15 for 20 for 110 yards and a touchdown. He carried the team on his back. And when he went 23 of 38 for 167 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, he had an okay game. He had a good game. And then when we beat Carolina, he went 23 for 33 for 200 yards and a touchdown. He was showing progression. I'd rather have Tua then. Because if you go through Tua's numbers the last couple of games, he's, he's, he's greater than Daniel Jones. If you go back to... The Jet game, 27 to 33 for 81%, 273, two touchdowns and an interception. Go to the next game, 27 to 31, 87%, 230, one touchdown. Go to the Giant game, 30 to 40, 73%, 244, and two touchdowns. If Daniel Jones had those numbers, Daniel Jones would be a god in New York. That was a godlike number for Daniel Jones, but anyone else, it sucks. Why is that? Can someone explain that to me? Why is that? Why when, why when a quarterback outside of New York has similar to better numbers than Daniel Jones, he's a bum, but you look at Daniel Jones' number and he, he throws for 200 yards, 110, and he's turning the corner to being a good quarterback. Why? Why, Lord, why? Someone explain it to me. Please explain it to me in the chat because I'm dumbfounded, I'm perplexed, I'm lost. Kind of like this whole giant organization. I see this stuff, and again... Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! I always feel like I'm taking crazy pills when I I see these things about Daniel Jones. And I love when someone said in the video yesterday, even when Daniel Jones doesn't play, you you find a way to bash him. No, I just said that he probably would have fumbled a bunch of those times because Mike Glennon held on the ball with two hands when he went down. That's all I said. And said the Giants probably would have lost by 10 more because they're guaranteed there would have been at least two more Daniel Jones fumbles. It's called honesty, guys. It's called truth, justice in the American way. I got to call out Logan Ryan a little bit. I, 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 he, he may have been being self-deprecating, but at the time when he did it was probably bad optics at that time. What he said about Daniel Jones missing the game and uh, Mike Lennon with a concussion. You know, he, he kind of comes out. Look, I don't know if these guys saw my high school quarterback tape. I'm pre- I, I, but I'm going to put it out there. Emergency, Ryan said, a lot like Tua, a lefty. I can throw two-yard passes to my left. Left. I'm accurate. I'm smart. I'm just going to put it out there. But look, we're going to do what we've got to do. Came off kind of like a douche there, Logan. Shouldn't. If you wanted to make a self-deprecating remark, do it, not do it right after the game. Because you look Bush League, it's a bad optic for the organization because we already got enough problems. And you and you actually, and I like Logan Ryan. I like Logan Ryan a lot as a player, but he's got some questionable things on his resume. Going back to the DAC injury, 
going back to what he did to Waddle yesterday, I mean, Waddle, yes, was getting up to run. He was because he wasn't tagged. But the way that Logan flew in there and the way he led with his shoulder pad and his helmet, that's a little questionable. You could just tag the kid and he's down. You don't have to tackle him. He was down. You just have to tag him. So uh, a little questionable there, Logan. I know you're a good I know you're supposedly a good guy, but some of the things you do on the field is a little bit Bush League. Conrad Dobler was a good guy, but everyone thought he was an a-hole. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Is Mike Glennon the answer at quarterback? No, the Peacock's not the answer at quarterback. Anyone thought that we were really being, uh, that we were not having fun with let the Peacock fly. Doesn't really understand sarcasm. Doesn't understand the channel. It was good, though, to see more of a professional quarterback under center who actually did look deep. Didn't throw it deep, but he looked deep. So I guess looking deep is half the battle. He kind of had Daniel Jones stats. And then I love the people that again, they go, yeah, well, he's, he, he sucked. Well, you compare his stats to Daniel Jones stats and they're pretty much the same. And if you think Daniel Jones is such a great quarterback, his stats should be elevated over a backup like Mike Glennon, but they're not, they're exactly the same. How could the offense look worse? Even with Glennon or Jones, how can it look worse? We can't get the plays in now. I'm waiting for him, Joe Judge, to go back and look at the tape and find out about the headsets. Because you, we can't even get the plays in on time. We're breaking the huddle with eight seconds left. And that is a delay from the call from the sideline to the quarterback, usually. And I don't want to hear the excuses about the headsets. We are a joke when it comes to making excuses. A literal joke. Because that's not an excuse. You can also use hand signals if the headsets aren't working properly, Joe Judge. That's allowed in this league. I am ready to see Jake from State Farm. Why not? Why not? Throw him out there. I already know what Daniel Jones can't do. Why do I need to continue to see what he can't do? Let's throw Jake out there. Give him a shot. Is he going to do worse than Daniel Jones? I doubt it. Could he do better? Why not? Is he going to do worse than Mike Lennon? Doubt it. Throw him out there. See what happens. Go from there. Let's talk about some of the other uh-oh moments during the game yesterday. Of course, Glennon started out 8 for 8, but then things kind of went south from there. He finished 23 or 44, 52%. Completed just last, he just completed 15 of his last 36 throws. He was off target a couple of, many times. He, he missed. Uh, he missed. He threw into double coverage on the interception. But you know what? I, I don't. You know what? To me, you're taking a shot deep, and that's what we need to do because you need to loosen the defense at times. And I've said this before with Daniel Jones. I don't care if you throw an interception. Just throw it deep once. Just let it fly. Sometimes you throw into double coverage. Good things happen. Sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes good things happen. Will Hernandez. Will Hernandez, in my view, cannot get any more embarrassing as an offensive lineman. He was basically a spectator when Jalen Phillips ran right past him, <laughs> ran right past him. And he's the guy with the longest tenure on the offensive line. It's his 51st career start and he couldn't pick up a simple stunt. And he's never been the run blocker that we ever expected him to be. But now his pass blocking blocking is even getting worse. It's time to let him go bye-bye because there's nothing there. And Joe Judge wasted two more timeouts. Even if you can kind of explain the first one, it's, it's just he just keeps wasting timeouts. And he has this thing where he has no guts on fourth down. Not going for it on fourth and two in the Miami 46 when you're trailing 10 to six in the third quarter. It's difficult to swallow because of the fact that it just, it, it just, it just doesn't work out. And then Dixon punts it 46 yards into the end zone. <laughs> you are too conservative, Joe Judge. You are too conservative to be a head coach. You don't seem like you want to make the mistakes. You don't seem like you have the guts. To make those, I get, you know what? I get on Ron Rivera all the time, Riverboat Ron, because he does some stupid things. 
But you know what Ron does? He throws it out there. He throws caution to the wind. He just says, here, look, look, let's give it a shot. Good, bad, or indifferent. Let's just give it a chance. We win, we win. We fail, we fail. But you know what? We do it as a team. And then the Giants gave up another touchdown in the final two minutes of the first half, which is now they've been outscored 52 to nothing in the final two minutes. What's going on there, Patrick Graham? I'm looking at you. You're next on the chopping block, baby. <laughs> because they're running, out of, they're running out of scapegoats. You keep waiting for Joe Judge to seem like he's learning something about, about how to be an NFL head coach. He's 28 games into his tenure. And he's 10 and 18. And that's not, that's, that's, but he's not learning anything. He's not learning stuff. And can we just figure out that Saquon Barkley can't block? (laughs) He can't block. Why try? He can't block. (laughs) It's been going on for four years. He just can't block. And really, do you want to have what is supposed to be one of your best offensive weapons in the backfield blocking? Flare him out. Send him wide. He did have the nice 23-yard run. He had two drops, and he had one drop. Uh, he had one drop near the one. On, he had one in the red zone and went at midfield, I think it was. It's just bad. It's just bad. And you want to sit there and say, you know, and everyone says, well, you can't blow up your team every two years. Sure you can. Sure you can. Why not? If things aren't working, why would you continue to do the same thing? Do we really have the time and the patience to give Daniel Jones year four? Really? Do we really have the time and the patience for that? I don't. I don't. I I don't want it. I know Boomer Sison came out and questioned Saquon Barkley's toughness. It's, he says it's almost like he's afraid to get hit. I don't believe in that. I, I don't believe in that. I think he's just, it's always year two that you come back fully strength, full strength of an ACL. Boomer should know that. I think you should know that. But I, I think that at times we, they get, you know, th- talking heads such as myself, gets the best of themselves when they say things. He's not feeling 100% physically. You can see that. He even came out after the game and admitted that. But do we blow this all up? Do we just start from scratch? New GM, new head coach, new quarterback. Why the hell not? The cap space is so horrid next year that we're going to have to make tough decisions anyway. So, I mean, I mean, it's, it's what it is. I, I can't see going into year four and we have to, we have to make a decision on the fifth year option for Daniel Jones by May of next year. So I can't literally sit there and tell you, I, I, I have full confidence in Daniel Jones as my starting quarterback. Cause anyone that does are usually the people that are delusional and they're inside the giant fan base. It's a garbage heap. It's time to come in here, 21st century quarterback, 21st century offense and defense. The defense itself could not even get off the field again. The bend, not break crap, I'm just tired of it because I keep telling you, you're going to hit a stretch where it's the bend, not break, and you're still going to break. Even when you bend something consistently over a period of time, it weakens and it breaks. Los Angeles just put up 41 points on Cincinnati who I think is actually a better t- who is a better team than the Giants that has a real time has a real big time quarterback Cincinnati that is the duck went 26 to 35 317 three touchdowns it's one of those games that I think it's going to get ugly for the Giants and it's going to get ugly quick and the bend not break philosophy I think for the Giants is going to break in LA and I'm going to tell you right now Joe Judge's decision to take his team to Arizona right after this game. That's so stupid. And I can tell you firsthand from being in NFL locker rooms, NFL players do not like being away from home over 10 days for unnecessary reasons. And this is an unnecessary trip. Just throw, I'm just throwing that out there. Should this thing get blown up? Yep, blow it up. Get it off the trash. Get it off the trash heap. 
It's time to move forward. Good night. The party's over. I hate to get to part because you know what? <laughs> you can't handle the fruit. I want some fruit. I want some new fruit. <laughs> I want to eat the fruit now, and it's early in the morning on Monday. Garbage in, garbage out. Said it a million times. Will and for Willis. And for the idiots, they're like, well, Malik Willis, he's a fifth round pick at best, really, because like almost every NFL scout has him going in the top 10. So you probably never watched any of his games at Liberty going back this year or last year. So I'm not going to take your opinion. Sorry. I'm going to go with the opinion in the people in the know. It's, it's, it's the, you know what? It, the worst part of all this is it's not just the losing. It's, it's the portion of the fan base that's delusional. That's the problem. They're not objective. They can't see outside their own fandom. They feed it. That's their problem. They're not observantly objective. Observationally objective. I forgot we, I forgot we coined that phrase. It's going to be interesting. We're, we'll, we'll have, we, hopefully, I think some things are going to happen in Giant Land because like I, I can't believe the, the, the defense, excuse me, the offense just got worse. <laughs> can't believe that. Freddie Kitchens has been here all year. Glennon's been here all year. If you had these problems because you had Jake from State Farm in the game, from in the game, Farm, <laughs> um, then I would understand. But you had guys that have been here all year. It's a disgrace. This team is a mess again. It's time to clean house. No decent general manager is going to want to come in here if you're told you have to keep Daniel Jones, Joe, uh, Joe Judge, and you have no cap space. It's time to move into the 21st century Giants. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports tech and entertainment. And as always, that's my theme music. Every good hero should have some.